Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with the Film Comics Explained podcast, and today we've gathered to watch and discuss Pitch Black, a cult classic and a film that pretty much kickstarted one of the most unexpected, entertaining franchises ever. Hey fellas, how are y'all going? Doing good, man. Yeah, absolutely. Excited to get back into it. Let's go. Uh, so how familiar are you guys with this film or the Riddick trilogy in general? It's been in my crosshairs for a while. I've wanted to watch it. I just seemed like the type of movie that would appeal to me, but I haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. Um, so I owned uh, the Chronicles of Riddick, I think is what the second one's called, on DVD mm -hmm. as a kid. So I watched it a ton. But um, I've only seen this one once or twice, and it was a long time ago. So I'm familiar-ish with the uh, universe that they're in, but I feel like my perspective on the series is maybe skewed to the... Uh, to the later part sure sure I'm, I'm a huge fan of the series uh, each of the films are quite unique um especially the difference between this film and the next film which sort of turns into a star wars like opera but this is a very self-contained sci-fi horror with a core group of characters and what what i think you're going to find that will surprise you is how well the characters are written um the arc that each of them go on they say most of your brain shuts down in cryosleep all but the primitive side, the animal side. Everything he says in this is just so fucking cool. <laughs> Some hoodoo holy man. Keith David. Whoa. Let's go. On the way to New Mecca, oh my. Smell the woman. Claudia Back. She is an amazing Aussie actress. She's in uh, Farscape, which is an awesome television series from the early 2000s. Mr. John. Cole Hauser. Blue-eyed devil, planning on taking me back to Slam. Interestingly enough, he is in the uh, Fast and the Furious sequel, Too Fast, Too Furious, as the antagonist, and it's a film that Vin Diesel is not in, so I just thought, always thought that was quite unique. <laughs> I keep on forgetting there are Fast and Furious movies that Vin Diesel's not in. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to discuss a little bit of the Fast and the Furious uh, soon. Well, I guess we may as well do it now. So what ended up happening was... Uh, Riddick, uh, not Riddick, Vin Diesel made this film in 2000, um, was sort of a cult classic, and then he made The Fast and the Furious a year later. Obviously, they made Too Fast and the Furious without him, and um, that was with Paul Walker, Tyrese Gibson, who sort of mm -hmm. took his spot. And um, when it came to the third film, Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, uh, Universal were like, we'd really want you to come in as a cameo at the end because this film doesn't have Paul Walker or you mm -hmm. and it's not really a Fast and the Furious film unless either of you are in there. And they offered him like $20 million for a cameo. Vin Diesel basically said, no, I don't want the money. Instead, uh, I want the rights to Riddick. So instead of paying him $20 million, uh, he got like a, uh, a pay cut plus the rights to the Riddick series and he was able to make the Chronicles of Riddick because um, he had the rights to it, which is right. pretty amazing. Yeah. Dude, I can't hear his voice without thinking, we're a family. One last <laughs> ride. So he started monologuing at the beginning and it, it took all of my strength to not, <laughs> to not do the voice. Well, what's interesting is like Vin Diesel always plays like a, a one note type of character and it's it's very uh, Jack, is it John Toretto, Jack Toretto um, mm. uh, from Fast and Furious. But in this, I, there's a clear difference between Riddick and the usual character he plays. Like this is the quintessential anti-hero. Mm -hmm. He's very rule of cool, right? Which mm -hmm. is a kind of his MO too. But he's very rule of cool because of this film. And uh, not as many people have seen this compared to the Fast and Furious. Yeah. So shit's going wild. This is a transport ship. Got hit with some debris. And now they're crashing on a pretty insane planet. Rate of descent beyond the limits. Rate of descent. So I'm not brushed up on the Vin Diesel lore, but is this considered to be his breakout film or was he in stuff before this? Well, yeah, he was in uh, Saving Private Ryan as well. Oh, uh, that's crazy. Okay, so my timeline's messed up because I did know that. Well, yeah, they're saying he, he didn't play lead roles. He was a supporting actor in mm -hmm. those, but they definitely um, showed that he could act. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This, this showed he could be a leading man. I love, I love like the, the design, like the art design. Like I like how, like, sort of a slam together the ship looks it's like an it old star real. wars ship. yeah it looks lived yeah. in you know yeah. what i mean and it's like you're saying with star wars it was that that aesthetic where it's it's futuristic but it's yeah. like old Grungy. retro analog kind of technology which is mm -hmm. just uh cozy you know what i mean at this point at yeah. least 
It's so it's so cozy. Exactly. That's the perfect way to say it. All right, guys. So this is very critical. They've uh, purged a lot of uh, cargo to sort of stabilize the ship. Now in their situation where they're losing control, and she has to make the decision as to whether or not to actually uh, let go of their passengers. <laughs> he looks so ridiculous, but so cool. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say <laughs> that's badass. He's got like um a gag or something like yeah. something he's biting on like yeah yeah they had like that monologue about cryo sleep and i was like but why why would that part of the rain re brain remain you know turned on oh, why because it's cool this one he bites you in well, no, cryo sleep the whole the whole notion is that uh uh he's an animal that's why right. he 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 the cryo sleep did nothing to him do you know what i mean well okay He's only primal. Oh, you're gonna find out that he's extremely primal. Don't you worry, Andre. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay, so she decided, uh, after pressure from her captain, not to let go of the passengers. <laughs> good call. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Oh my god, we're landing in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Fast and Furious had spaceships. Like this early on. They have spaceships now, I guess. <laughs> That's right. Whoa. Okay, that effect. That was crazy. They just horizontal flip for a second there. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. I think that those are people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this the is this the genuine experience of landing in Australia, Nia? Yeah, every, every single time, bro. <laughs> they give you two seatbelts, one for your waist and one for your legs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and something to bite down on. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has a gag and a blindfold. <laughs> it's it's so blindfold. terrifying. So that Australia joke wasn't just me be trying to be funny. Uh, they actually shot this film in Cooper PD. Oh. Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. Ni Nia knows gun. all the Australia movie lore. Oh yeah, facts. I got oh, my dissertation. I got my dissertation on uh, Australian Australian films in uh, 2015. Oh, yeah. It was a one day course <laughs> online. Somebody's gonna get hurt one of these days. It ain't gonna be me. So they were taking him to prison, right? Uh, not necessarily they. This is a transport ship, and that right. lawman that you saw was transporting him. Right. But none of the other people actually know who he is or what's going on. Oh shit, they... the captain's dead. Oh shit. Ah! Oh fuck. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Alright, they got me. They got me. Yeah, they got me too. <laughs> I thought we were going to have this big emotional don't moment. Don't touch it! Don't, don't you touch that handle! There's some anesthesia in the med lock in the back of the cabin. Not anymore, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, you know the guy standing to the left of Keith David? Yeah. That, I, <laughs> he was my act, one of my acting teachers, Les Chantry. Oh, shit. Oh! <laughs> it was one of his breakout roles. I think he did a film after this called Righteous Kill, where he played uh, Robert De Niro's lawyer, which is pretty badass. Oh, cool. What the bloody hell happened? I don't know. Well, I for one am thoroughly grateful. Actually, the only reason we're alive is because of her. Yeah. Thanks for saving our dicks. Well, technically it wasn't her, it was the captain. <laughs> she wanted all of y'all dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it really that dangerous? <laughs> only around humans. <laughs> Hey, yo. What the? Oh. Here we go. I'm with this guy. Lost. Booze? <laughs> this is what you have to drink? Unfortunately, it is not permitted, especially while on hot. You do realize there's no water, don't you? All deserts have water. Ah, uh, based holy man. <laughs> <laughs> Classic sci-fi land on a planet has breathable air. There's probably an oasis somewhere, you know? <laughs> no medicine survived the crash, only booze. Yep, yep. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my goodness. That look was wild. That was... 
Oh shit, y'all have them fucked up now. Did y'all ever see Book of Eli? Yeah. That's kind of giving me those, like this like super overexposed kind of vibe. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Another desert holy man. Well, look, what's the point anyway? I mean, if the man is gone, he's gone. Why should he bother us? Well, maybe he'll just come back and skull fuck you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> What I love about this film is everything we learn about Riddick from the beginning is uh, it's uh, power and ruthlessness endowed through other people's accounts. Right. Especially Cole, the lawman, who mm -hmm. we'll find is maybe not a reliable narrator. Three sons. Bloody hell. So much for your nightfall. Oh, dude, Les, how you doing, mate? <laughs> so young here. He's like 40 now. Uh, direction from our law. It's a bit of a bad sign. That's Riddick's direction. I thought you found his restraints over there, towards sunset. Right. Which means he went See, learning little bits and pieces from Cole mm -hmm. about how Riddick sort of functions. Based holy man about to do based holy man things. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> oh, shit. on a trip to New Mecca, right? Once in every lifetime, should there be a great heart. To get to know Allah better, yes, but to know yourself as well. Keith David is so great. He adds so mm -hmm. much gravitas to whatever he's in. Yes. He's just so good, and he never ages. He looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, he's in The Thing, which is a 1979 horror film. Like, that's how mm -hmm. long back it goes, you know? <laughs> Just got a stogie boozing, wait for all this to blow over. I love it. <laughs> for some, this is a holy pilgrimage. For others, it's a booze cruise. Right. <laughs> this is cool. From the distance, it looks like a tree. Yeah. Oh. Riddick did that five minutes ago. <laughs> 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 this was he was here. <laughs> he was here. That's so cool. The elephant graveyard, but with gigantic alien monsters. <laughs> right? I mean these bones are fucking huge. Mm -hmm. Must have been mm -hmm. dinosaurs. Looks like a massive Chitari, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. From the first Avengers. I'm really digging the world building in this because it's such an interesting mix of old and new stuff. You know what I mean? Like future tech mm -hmm. goggles, spaceships, and then we've got like bottles of bourbon granted i gotta stop mentioning the booze but one of the guys has a baseball cap on they're uh it's like an earth-based religion um they're they're obviously heading to as opposed to like the uh new mecca in um the middle east they're heading to a planet called new mecca right, so it just right. shows that the religions have expanded they're boozing which um you know, is to show us 80s yes. concepts of hydration. And as they're like, well, there's no water. Yeah, Let's just get as dehydrated as possible. <laughs> what Owens mean? Oh, shit, he heard. I'm not touching the hand. I love how Riddick's just in the back. Yeah. Watching yeah. <laughs> During the landing, Things were at their worst. Owens was at his best. He's the one that stopped the docking pilot from dumping the main cabin. Mm, woman hair. That's a bit, that's a bit creepy, <laughs> really. What are you doing? <laughs> what any good ape man would do. <laughs> Dude, did that gun have brass knuckles or something on it? I swear the <laughs> handguard was like spiked. It looked like it's it. incredible. <laughs> Very practical. I like this. <laughs> the color palette is so desaturated. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of certain parts of Mad Max Fury Road, but obviously this came a lot way before. Right. Is that Australia as well? Or am I, am I tripping? What? Uh, Mad Max. Was that yeah, shot out there? Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. Set uh, and shot in Australia. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Well, we got to add that to the list, actually. The yeah, that original Mad Max films with Mel Gibson. That'd be a blast. So there was a settlement here at some stage. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Probably at way after those beasties were dead, I'd imagine. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I love how this film just takes its time. 
Yeah, that was something I noticed as well. Like in the opening crash sequence, I felt like they were just kind of like hanging out, taking account of everything. You know what I mean? That was like a really, they were, they were very comfortable just kind of like letting that uh, portion mm -hmm. yeah. breathe. Well, the, I mean, the inciting incident is them crashing, but there's another major event about to happen that sort of changes things. So it makes sense that mm -hmm. uh, they'd want this, the tone of this to be a bit, a bit calm, a bit more chill. Because um, they, just as we're discovering this world, they are too. You know what I mean? They're figuring mm -hmm. out what's happening, and nothing's really fed to us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like even mm -hmm. this, this is very critical. That bitch, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! <gasps> Ooh, let's go. <laughs> the Star Wars music almost. <laughs> <laughs> what does Ray say when she sees the Millennium Falcon? Like, uh, what about that ship? That was garbage. The garbage will do. <laughs> and they just like, oh, <laughs> disrespect. <laughs> I'm glad I haven't watched them yet. I'll probably get to watch it with you guys. <laughs> Spanish joke for people who speak Spanish. No! <gasps> oh my god. I thought I was the only one who got out of the crash of life. <laughs> oh. Wow. What the hell? <laughs> Crikey. I thought it was him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. Oh my what? god, that's <laughs> so cool. He's <laughs> crying. lemonade up there. What is that shot? Wait. No Nobody noticed him either? Like, it's just us who saw that? So can't be. might be able to adapt to <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> sorry, I thought I heard something. <laughs> he told her to shut up and he's like, sorry, I thought I heard something. Danger. To be fair, none of these guys actually know what Riddick looks like, you know what I mean? Like, right. the only person that saw him was um, uh, Cole and uh, the co-pilot. So it sort of makes sense that this guy shot him. I mean... Although that reaction, man, he should have been a bit more upset. Crikey. <laughs> Crikey. I just killed somebody. <laughs> what the hell is Riddick up to? Maybe he's just hanging out. He's, he's up, chilling, he's man. Watching it all unfold. He's got a lawn chair. Oh. This is what happens, Zeke, when you just shoot people. Oh my god. He's so badass. <laughs> to me that's your choice but just so you know there's a debate right now as to whether we should just leave you here to die you mean the whispers the ones telling me to go for this sweet spot just to the left of the spine the abdominal aorta it's a metallic taste of human blood <laughs> if you cut it with peppermint snaps that goes away show me your eyes riddick they'd have to come a lot closer for that closer mm -hmm. <laughs> closelier <laughs> Where the hell can I get eyes like that? Gotta kill a few people. Okay, I can do it. <laughs> Dude, he's on board. You dig up a doctor, and you pay him 20 menthol cool to do a surgical shine job on your eyeballs. So he can see who's sneaking up on you in the dark? Exactly. Leave! Cute kid. Let me tell you what I think happened. I think he went off on the guy and buried him in the hill somewhere, and now he's got you believing there's something else out there. Well, let's just be sure. Look, being ballsy with your life doesn't change what came before. It's just stupid. What, do you think I'm trying to prove something? Well, are you? I mean, this doesn't seem very smart, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> we left We left smart a while ago. All that blood. Some guys disappeared. I don't know. Mysterious hole on alien planet with giant beasties. The only guy that seems to know what's going on said... It wasn't him. <laughs> oh, you see, the the hole is a metaphor for the womb, a spiritual. <laughs> ah. What the hell was that? I actually almost didn't even see it. <laughs> Fuck Again, that. Uh, Oh my goodness. 
Like hammerhead sharks, but for like caves. She's fucked, because if uh, she yells for help, the people are going to pull her down, right? Yep. Uh-oh. Oh my god, I love this. That's such a neat predicament they've put her in. Yeah, because if, yeah. if the Iman pulls, he's going to pull her towards them. There's nothing he can do to help her. Like, she has to cut the rope. The kid might be a sociopath, but he's got good ears. I saved you. Remember that when you choose. <laughs> it was so fucking stupid. Yeah, it was. Finally found something worse than me, huh? So here's the deal. The truth is, is I'm tired of chasing you. My recommendation do me. Don't take the chance that I'll get shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost me, motherfucker. That's what I would do with you. I want you to remember this moment. The way it could have gone and didn't. Do we have a deal? What you remember this moment? That's what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he didn't say the complete phrase, how it could have gone. <laughs> This film had such a low budget, but I love the way that they creatively get around that to make interesting shots and set set right. pieces. And so far, the uh, the VFX on the monsters looks great. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Lost. Oh, it's mine now, bitch. <laughs> Paris Pierre antiquities dealer, entrepreneur. It should be Riddick, escape convict, murderer. <laughs> that's, that's a particularly good Shiraz. By all means, please help yourself. There's nothing we can't repair as long as the electrical adapts. Well, it's not a star jumper. Does it need to be? Do me a favor. Check these containers out and uh, see what we can patch these wings up with. Huh? It's funny that his glare is even more intense with the goggles than without them. Usually the <laughs> glasses have the opposite effect. And I love, like, this has to be intentional, but the way that the glasses sit on his face, they, like, point out a little bit. Like, yeah. like salamander or something. Like, he's, like, a little mm. cross-eyed. But it's <laughs> such a vibe. <laughs> my. My all right, all right, my turn. My indeed. Maybe you'd be less thirsty if you drank less booze. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough power for a sys check, but we'll still need more cells. Five total to launch. 35 kilos each, huh? Well, you know that old sand cat out there? I might be able to get it going. <laughs> the kid shaved his hair. Oh my god, I do love that. Like that's cute. He's larping so hard. Yeah, at first he had a he had a cap of some kind, and then the next scene he's just got glasses that no one addresses, and now he's got no hair. Major <laughs> fanboying of Vin Diesel before he was famous. <laughs> Dude, like in the next scene he's gonna have a black wife beater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. When does he start talking about family? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen a single <laughs> car. <laughs> You're missing the party. Come on, boy. <gasps> missing the party. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Go on now, get. <laughs> he just noticed his haircut. <laughs> What? It's the winner of the lookalike contest. That's a big ass wrench. Mm -hmm. You know, don't split the party. And you certainly don't go off on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They probably had a big dropship take him off planet. These people didn't leave. Come on. Whoever got Zeke got them. They're all dead. Shit. The geologist never left. I don't know. I know you don't prep your emergency ship unless there's a fucking emergency. He's <laughs> fucking right. He's <laughs> <You're> fucking right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Guys, has anyone seen the little one? Ali! Has anyone checked the corner room? <laughs> Looks like little Jurassic Park and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's neat that there's like mini versions of them. It's like somehow equally or like more terrifying. Ali, no, no, no. Jack, wait, wait. Ali? 
Harry! Harry. He is 100% dead. You were right. The effects have aged like fine wine. Yeah, they actually look... I feel like they look really nice. All things considered, man, especially like with what Niet was saying about the budget, like feels yeah. like what was the budget? Let's pull it up. Let's see if we can't figure it out. Oh, oh my God! They just ate his face. Other buildings weren't secure, so they ran here. Heaviest doors. Thought they'd be safe inside. Yeah. Rest in peace, though. I didn't really think that they would kill the kid so early on. Felt like that might be a. A heartstrings moment for later in the movie, but I guess they could be setting that up for the uh, the winner of the lookalike contest. <laughs> she tried to give him a bit of water. He's like, "What is it broken?" She's like, "No, dickhead. I was trying to do something nice and apologize." <laughs> so they figured out the geologists that were here weren't able to leave. So they were prepping to leave. Uh, they were getting attacked by something, and they all hold up in this section, not knowing that the cellar below them was obviously open to the creatures as well. This is what I mean about this film taking its time to not spoon feed and just have them say what's on their mind. We slowly see them piecing everything together. The film almost gives you a chance to figure it out before they do. Yeah, I love that. Like, if you're going to do like an unraveling mystery, like definitely give the audience all the pieces to solve it with the characters. No deus ex machina silliness, you know? You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Oh. Oh! And this is what I mean. The first half of the film, it's so calm, so chill. We got a few deaths, people blaming Riddick, but we're not even into the deep end yet. Mm -hmm. Right. This is all just establishing the characters, what their objectives are, their motivations, uh, the different archetypes. Uh, each of the characters are so different. I love it. They really are. Look, you told me that we could trust him. You said that we had a deal. Chance. They're all very complicated characters. Mm -hmm. The chains don't work on this guy. Yeah, because if they wanted to make, for example, the the cop, right? It would have been a hard ass. No, we're never letting Riddick go. But no, he's like, dude, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But listen to what he's saying now. You know, he hasn't harmed any of us. As far as I can tell, he hasn't even lied to us. Let's just stick to the deal, John. He's a killer. They're stuck in a bit of a dilemma because uh, Riddick is prone to doing this where like he'll just escape, abandon everybody. At the same time, they did promise to honor the agreement they had, so... I thought this is no ships. Ships. This? This is just a personal agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> I told you not to carry a knife. This is just... Uh, I'm just grooming myself, bro. What are you talking about? This isn't a knife. Got this from Manscaped, bro. Don't worry about it. Thanks. <laughs> it's all about aesthetics. Strange not doing a romp on the main drive yet. Unless he told you the particulars of my escape. I've been meaning to catch up with you alone. You think John's is a do-right man? You think I could trust him to cut me loose? And again, I am worth twice as much alive. Your John's ain't a cop. He's got that nickel slick badge, but he's just a merc. Don't waste my time i love that that actually makes a ton of sense because i was i had gripes of that earlier mm. if he was a cop like i don't know but if he's a big payday a lot right. bigger if he's alive it makes a lot more sense right and it's an interesting character characterization of that guy as well because i thought he had come around you know like had a ton of growth but mm -hmm. and he's throwing another curveball here he's like have you noticed that john's is always shaking and then he went also asking why your co-pilot died in pain and didn't get the medication that you told them to get. Oh, at the start, he was screaming, yeah. and she's like, the medication's in the back. Uh, yeah, they found the medication, but it wasn't right. used on the guy that needed it. In fact, it's being used right now. Right, right on screen, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Hell no. Oh, my Don't goodness. Don't do it. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, uh -uh. no. That has to be a, a reverse shot, I think right from from the eye moving it out and then played in reverse because i would never put a needle in my eye <laughs> for, yeah. for for any reason <laughs> you have a little caffeine in the morning and i have a little morphine it's not a problem unless you're gonna make no it becomes a problem when you let owens die like that yeah, that's super evil you feel it that's my first run-in with riddick 
Better leave a piece of the shiv in there, Carolyn. I can feel it pressing against the cord. I'm not your fucking captain. You're gonna find that each piece of dialogue in this film is very, very critical. It reveals a lot about the characters, because from the beginning you're like, uh, Oh, Riddick's the clear bad guy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And Cole is their traditional good guy. But what I love about this film is he's basically a mercenary disguised as a lawman. Uh, and he's representing the blurred lines of morality. Um, and you see that especially with, you know, his drug addiction and all of his decisions regarding Riddick. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't care about the team. It's yeah. literally all about him. Whereas Riddick, on the other hand, you know, he's got a very... He's got a paradigm of complex characterization. It's very dangerous, very enigmatic. Yet we see that he's actually possessing more of a moral compass. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the more dangerous part about Riddick is we don't know what he's about. We now know what the lawman's about. He's about money, right? Yeah, correct. Well, that's what I was saying. Pay attention to who's giving us the information. Because in the beginning, everything we hear about Riddick is through him. And mm -hmm. we just discovered he's not very reliable. Right. Never trust a glowy. <laughs> this is my so favorite part cute. of this movie. <laughs> Little Riddick. This rover is sick. I love that shot. Yeah. It's so messy, but so, like, necessary. I'd put yeah. it in there. And, like, there's a really cool sci-fi noisy aesthetic to it, you know? Like, it's it's messy, but it's, it's clean at the same time, you know? Mm-hmm. A couple of things. It'll only be a few minutes. No, you fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, no. You wouldn't leave it out, would it's the last two grams of cocaine left from the old world. <laughs> it's I a very rare, very rare <laughs> vintage of cocaine. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that, that, that dude's D-E-D. Dead. And there's so much... Oh, I can't wait to the end, because there's so much for us to dive into each of these characters. I don't want to spoil it yet. All right, we'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at that boy go. Oh shit. Ooh. Yo. Oh shit. Are you ready, Andre? <laughs> no. <laughs> those those little beasties didn't waste a second. <laughs> At least five. <laughs> hey, no. Just a suggestion. Perhaps you should flee. <laughs> this is so cool. Don't stay there. Stay down. Don't... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my god. They just carry Yo. her top half off screaming? That's <laughs> metal. Rick, just get some. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love about Riddick is that you can see he's he's so seasoned. You know, he's yeah. been through sh worse than this. Yeah. He's just like, well, that happened. <laughs> in fact, you can sort of see him relishing the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the most fun he's had in a long time. Oh, it beats being tied up in a refrigerator with a gag. I mean, come on. He's gonna stretch yeah, his legs a little me? bit. Is it just me or do these shots look very 80s? Oh, super yeah. 80s, man. Come on. Like... What is it, Rick? What is it now? Like I said. It's not me you gotta be worried about. It ain't me you gotta worry oh, about. Yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Niet was waiting for that line to drop. You know mm -hmm. he was. <laughs> the timestamp is in his notes. He's... <laughs> <laughs> Any nice. moment now. And this is where we get our title. Really? How great is it? It's not till halfway that the title actually makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> they were right. actually initially going to call this film Nightfall, but it, it was too similar to Isaac Asimov's uh, novel of the same name. Right. Interesting. But Pitch Black sounds cooler, though. Yeah. It's such a great title. It's not like uh, The Happening. Like... <laughs> <laughs> they actually, like, <laughs> fix the shitty working title by the end. And it also ties in thematically to, to Riddick because he obviously can see in the dark, right? Yeah. 
Sound design for these things is so neat. It is. Mm -hmm. Sound design, the practical design, and the CGI. Uh, they yeah. used a mixture of all three. So while the, the shots that we've gotten so far are more CGI, especially when they're in their hordes, when we see the creatures one-on-one, -on -one, it's all practical. Right. That makes perfect sense because at the beginning, they looked very practical. They looked very there, you know, when mm -hmm. they went into the cave. Ironically, they did practical over CGI to save money, right? Whereas now, mm. you'll tend to find big productions using CGI to save money, and yeah. it ends up costing them so much more. Yeah. So many blockbusters are so much less convincing than this. You, this feels like a real world. I know it's not yeah. like the best film, but I feel like I'm there with them. All the practical sets, everything, each of the mm -hmm. characters feel alive. So how are they going to get out of this? Oh. Damn. That's the thing, Nia. They won't. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is where they die. Like, think about the fucking the stakes right now. They're all trapped in this area. The mm -hmm. ship, the getaway ship doesn't have enough fuel. They've got the fuel. They've got to fucking physically carry it there. And they're surrounded by millions of fucking, uh, you know, creatures that can see in the dark. Like, they're fucked. Right. And they're all, there are too many individuals in the, it's a swarm, right? So it's just, yeah. it's not like killing one big monster, which would be a lot easier. And they've all got to sort of like put their trust in a person that they were scared of at the start, you know? Mm -hmm. I wonder what those beasts eat normally, because they seem to yeah. be the only thing on the planet. Yeah, dude, when I did a video on this a couple of years ago, one of the big comments um, was basically, so I get that they ate every creature that existed on the planet, but what are they eating now? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we do see another species that is smaller, which could explain something that they were feeding on. But I think in the end, uh, the conclusion that most of the people in the comments came to is that they were basically feeding on each other. Right, right. right. I think that's probably pretty apt to... Like, I think crickets will eat each other in captivity, like, with no food. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but the, the, the only thing is they couldn't, they can't grow, like, en masse. If they're feeding, if they're feeding on themselves, there's no way they can be, uh, there can be as many of them as we see in the film. Does that, that, does that yeah. make sense? Right. So you could probably get away with them feeding on themselves, but, you know, there'd probably be like a hundred at most. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that the ones we're seeing are all juveniles. None of them have made them to adulthood. Which yeah. Oh, you don't. Be... You, we haven't even seen the adults, bro. You don't want to see the mm. adults, bro. Oh, okay. How fantastic is it that this is the gripe we have, though? Too. You know what I mean? It's such a small <laughs> thing that you just headcanon away, and the movie's still banging. Like that's what yeah. a luxury. Where's Hassan? Hassan, get here! Oh my god. I do love the creature designs. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Damn it! Goodness. That was fast. Oh. What? It's like the night is scalding it. It hurts them. So we got one cutting torch. We got two hand lights. There's got to be something we can rip out of the crash ship. Spirits. Even the even the lighting. How cool is this shot? Yeah, I like that. All of this could have been avoided if the researchers were like, "Yeah, we have a, uh, yeah, it's always day, but we should still bring some lights." All right. Now, how long can this last? A few hours, day tops. I had the impression from the model the two planets were moving as one, and there would be a lasting darkness. We need to think about everybody now, especially the kid. How scared is this boy going to be out there in the dark? Don't use him like that. When you deal with your own fear. Oh no shit. <laughs> I love that she's starting to, to see right through him. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe we got enough light. Not for fucking what? We stick to the plan. We get the four cells back to the skiff. We're off this rock. How much you weigh, Johns? Around 79 kilos to Because you're that. 79 kilos of gutless white meat, and that's why you can't think of a better <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> shit. Dude, she is going in on him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's double symbolic because he actually has no balls mm. <laughs> that's a great point this dude's gonna die for his ancient artifacts i swear like 
<laughs> he's just got a bucket of wine. <laughs> Dude, he's serious about his 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 craft. I can't lie. Yeah, respect. Looks clear. <laughs> <laughs> Clear. I said it looks clear. What does it look like now? Looks clear. Looks <laughs> clear. <laughs> does it now? Technology, baby. You're running about 10 paces ahead. I want light on my back, but not on my eyes. And check your cuts. These bad boys know our blood now. That's a really smart, like, strapping lights to his back so they can see him. And mm -hmm. to scare away the beast, but so he can see. That's I like that. Here's the thing. Compared to other sci-fi horrors where characters are like just behaving stupidly, I what I appreciate about this film is not only are the characters they're not only do they feel real, but like they, they all make logical, rational decisions to deal with the circumstances, you know? Right. right. And they have like Keith had an understanding of uh, approximately how long the clips would last. The cop has his own interest, she sees it through his bullshit. Like you know, she's like, also dealing with the guilt of uh, nearly um, killing everybody as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? She's yeah. growing from like a, a character racked with guilt to to, uh, to a leader, basically. What is so goddamn valuable in your life that you worried about losing? Is there anything at all besides your next spike? Got him. Oof. Here's something else I kind of appreciate about this movie is it like doesn't, I mean they might have like a gun or two, but everyone's not armed, like super heavily. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. low key just running through the desert, hoping it all works out. They got their lights. You know what I mean? Yeah. How great is this shot where the creatures are just all backing yeah. away and then coming closer? It's so cool. It's like a sea of creatures. Oh no. And, and you're right, Preston. They don't have that many guns because obviously it's not like a, a military ship, you know? It's a right. transport ship. So right. the only person that really has a gun is the lawman. Exactly. And they're all just making do with the supplies that they have. And it just makes it more interesting because it's like we're saying a lesser sci-fi movie yeah. would do this and that. Like, I feel like a lesser sci-fi movie would just like, we've been spotted, go loud. And then it's just a, you know, gunfight scene in the desert. And... Oh, you dumb kid. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right, Preston. Okay, run out. <laughs> gonna make me look like an ass. <laughs> what is wrong with this dude? Aw, oh, dude. Oh my god. He's that dude. He's that dude that fucks everything up for everyone. Yeah. He deserves to die right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should have drank some more liquor, give you courage. I was supposed to die in France. Never ever saw France. Oh, 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 so oh. sick i love that oh, shot oh, oh, oh. we don't even need to see his death we know he's fucked <laughs> yep that was a cool death too yeah. like <laughs> oh shit look at that <laughs> why have we circled are we lost canyon ahead i circled once to buy some time to think that's death row up there especially with the girl bleeding I just thought it'd be better if people took me for a guy. I thought they might Jesus, leave me alone. Jack, why did you me? They've been no so before ever since we left. Oh, that's why they've been following oh. us. Oh. Look, this is not going to work. We're going to have to go back. I love this. Anna, you're right, Carolyn. What's to be afraid of? My life's a steaming pile of meaningless shit anyhow. When she was so willing to sacrifice us all. What's talking about? Does not help us. During the crash, she tried to blow the whole passenger cabin. You are such a fucking blowhole! How much do you weigh now? See, even the bad guy gets a nice fucking yeah. line. Do you know what I mean? How much do you weigh now? <laughs> I love it too how every character's got a little secret and like the young girls is so like, I don't know, sympathetic, I think. Everyone else <laughs> is like, you know what I mean? Weighs on us morally. Like, and you feel sorry for the holy man. He's just trying to take his kids to pilgrimage he's just mm -hmm. lost one child you know yeah battlefield doctors decide who lives and dies it's called tree yeah i really kept calling a murder when i did <laughs> 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 that's great <laughs> this movie is one liner city i love it this is brilliant the, the lawman is suggesting they leave them behind <laughs> and he's coming up with dubious ways to like hurt them so that the Aliens attacked them instead of uh, him and Riddick. Yep. All right. 
Because he needs Riddick, because that's his need, payday. Yeah. And then he's going to betray Riddick at the end. You do the girl, I'll do the rest. It's not too big a job for you, is it? He's such a piece of shit, I love it. <laughs> I'm just wondering if I don't need a bigger piece of bait. Like who? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh shit. Oh what the hell? If he makes it to New Mecca, that would have been one hell of a pilgrimage. Like if the if the if the dad yeah. <laughs> if you, <laughs> Ooh. he brought a grooming appliance to a knife fight. Dude, he's like not even winded. He's so badass. Mm. Yeah, Riddick's not trying, guys. He's he's literally toying with him. Never taking the chains off, Johns. <laughs> you one brave fuck before. Chain, the gauge, badge. Oh, he's like a psychological monster to this. That's so good. Told you to ghost me. I love that Riddick's telling him you used to be a good person. You know what I mean? When you mm -hmm. first were hunting me, like you used to be honorable. What happened to you? Oh, I love the design of the Bioraptors. It's so mm. unique. Oh! <laughs> oh! What a shot! I That's you, been... Doesn't this movie just get better? Like, yeah. yeah. And the title makes so much sense now. It's so good. <laughs> Big plan. Where's John's? What's half? We're gonna lose everybody out here. Don't you cry for John's? Don't you dare. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Blind spot. Shall we pray to the Lord? It's pointless. Because you do not believe in God. Does not mean God does not believe Think in someone you. someone can spend half their life in a slam, the horse bit in their mouth and not believe? I absolutely believe in God. And I absolutely hate the fucker. Two of your boys are already dead. How much faith do you have left, Father? Yeah, it is interesting that the holy man isn't the one with... Uh, crisis of faith right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, mm -hmm. I could just definitely see how they would take it that direction. A no, very I mean... understandable crisis of faith, too. Right. right? You're taking yeah. your three children to a fucking holy pilgrimage, and God does this to you. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is Keith in the sequels? I don't want to ruin anything for you. Alright. <laughs> ask me after the film. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that's sick. Mm -hmm. What the? Dude, at least their blood's not acid. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized Riddick is carrying all of their fucking power yeah. cells. Yep. Each one's like 40 kilos. He's Rick, baby. He lifted a Ferrari with his bare, fa bare hands, you know? Mm -hmm. He can carry four power cells. Oh, no. Oh no, not Liz! No! Dude, no! Leave my acting teacher alone! <laughs> Let's oh, go! Thank God. Dude, I, I know, lose right? Another one. <laughs> Bro. I was about to be so upset. Riddick! <laughs> the, the music has been great too. Mm hmm. A very, we're about to see a character defining moment. Oh, I'm feeling it. I, I feel it in my my loins. Cause he can just leave now and abandon them. Look at that <laughs> boy! Oh man, the sound design of the creatures is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, and they just look so darn cool. Mm-hmm. Let's go. 
Ooh. Let's go. Did not know who was fucking with <laughs> <laughs> The one-liner. Yeah. Dude, this is why he wanted the rights. He was like, think about how many one-liners I could put into this sequel. <laughs> Absolutely. Is a dark version of Power Pro Powerpuff Girl music? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's raining. Rain, rain. Oh. That's something I didn't expect. Yeah, I thought it was more blood. So where the hell's it got now? Yeah, it seems like God really wants him to die here. <laughs> God's like, I'm sorry, Keith. Riddick needs more character development if he's gonna make a sequel. Just tell me that the settlement is right there. Oh, dude, I'm so over it. Lock them in. Mm -hmm. Based man is about to do base things. He's not coming back, is he? Quick, was that a Jack Daniels bottle? Yeah. I love that. He was like, we've got all these rare vintages of wine in this like ancient bourbon as well. That's hilarious. <laughs> I think it belonged to the antique dealer that, that died. Right, earlier. right. But like in the future, like Jack Daniels, that would be like, be rare stuff, man. Yeah, man, he, he lives here. Isn't that like the Jack Daniels ad? Like oh. Jack lives here. There's no better place to be exactly who you are. Drop by sometime. Jack lives here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I haven't seen a Jack Daniels ad since I was 10. Oh, shit. Strong survival instinct. I admire that. I promised him that we would go back with more light. Did you? Come on, Riddick. There's got to be some part of you that wants to rejoin the human race. Truthfully, I wouldn't know how. Please just come with me. I got a better idea. Come with me. You're fucking with me. I know you are. You know I am. Here, I'll make it easy. I take my hand. Vin Diesel is so fucking delightfully playful in this, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's so comfortable. It's so bizarre to see. Especially when, like, in recent stuff, he looks so low effort when he speaks specifically. Mm -hmm. Like, here, yeah. he is so expressive. You know, it's very theatrical. It's an in, it's indicative of a character. This is like not even the worst stuff they've been through. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like almost sympathetic towards what they're going through, but sort of convicted in his view of things. Yeah, she can't do it. I am the captain of this ship, and I am not leaving anyone on this rock with those fucking things. You die. Yes, I would, Riddick. That's the thing about Riddick. He would have actually left him there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and he was literally fucking with her. Yeah. And yeah, it, it doesn't seem like he has any problem with like going back for them. Yeah. I think in the back of, him, of his mind, he was going to come back. But he, he was testing yeah. her to see where her mind was at. <laughs> Just like There's my God, the Riddick. There's my God. Oh, Yay. my goodness. What a line. Whoa, that's so good. How how fucking clever that the person 
who is challenging his belief is the one that reinstates it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to your point, yeah, he's not like, come with me so we can leave. He's like, no, you come with me. You know what I mean? Doesn't really ex explicitly say he's gonna run off. Hey, they're, they're a family now. Look at this. I don't have friends. I got family. <laughs> One oh, last man. ride. <laughs> what would make this film is if he yelled out La Familia as he ran past. <laughs> <laughs> Something about faith. Look at a prime specimen run. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking cool. <laughs> oh, because earlier he found out their blind spot. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. sir. Set up and pay off. Let's go. It's great. This is the only time we see vulnerability from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we when he got fucking chewed up. <laughs> He's pissed off. He knows that he doesn't deserve to live. Like, because she's a much better person than he was. Damn, mm -hmm. dude. Her arc was so good. She's great, dude. That's like the perfect ending for her. I mean, like, I know that's brutal and sad and all that, but like... It's, it, it's the mark of a good writer is you don't right. get attached to the characters. You get attached to their character arc. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And like now she's, you know, cleansed of her sins that she was so desperately trying to Facts. write throughout the whole film like at the same time Cole is revealed to have not been an honorable man do you know what I mean like yeah it's like yeah. in the darkness everything is revealed Riddick finally shows some emotion in that moment you know what I mean it finally got to him yeah oh he's showing emotion right now what he's doing now is not like a, a smart choice more of like uh this is this is a decision of anger you'll right see. right mm -hmm. but it was like I was saying throughout the film he seemed like he almost enjoyed this, you know? Yeah. It was very lighthearted. Can we just get the hell out of here now? You can't leave without saying goodnight. <laughs> A lot of questions, whoever we run into. So what the hell do we tell them about yet? Tell them what it's dead. You might want to go up a bit. Yeah, heading yeah. to an uh, asteroid belt there. It's so much cooler this way, Nia. You just got to go over there. <laughs> yeah. It's so much cooler. If it were lame, they'd be dead. But since it's mm. cool, they live. Rule of cool, man. <laughs> there we go, guys. So that is Pitch Black. God damn. That was so much better than I was expecting, and I was expecting something great. Like, yeah. I loved this. <laughs> it was just so intentional. I really appreciated that. And then their use of setting was incredible as well. You start out in space, you get to the planet, it's all bright and white and overexposed. Then they're in the graveyard, the cool blues, a little bit of interior stuff. Then it's night for most of the film. And then huge twist, it rains. Like it felt mm -hmm. like they were in so many different kinds of environments. Absolutely. Uh, and it's a film that's really dependent on a uh, great setting. I think, I think you're right there. Uh, for a film with a limited budget shot in one location, 
what they were able to do with the practical effects, uh, the interior of the ships, uh, the core mining area, uh, the the outback, obviously, and as you said, uh, the different like weather and uh, visibility settings. You know, you've got the the first half of the movie is in light where they can all sort of see everything that's mm-hmm. happening, and there's no really inherent danger besides Riddick. And then as it transitions to darkness, you actually get to see more of the characters. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. In 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 time uh, in their most trying of times is when who they really are is revealed to us, um, yeah. and we had to we had to see the juxtapositioning of the light to the dark. But as you said, you know we've got even in the dark setting, you've got the uh, the desaturated look, you've got the uh, Riddick's look as well, you've got the uh, normal terrain, you've got the rain as well. It just they mm-hmm. made so much out of this, you know. Yeah, and you would assume like with it being, you know, pitch black and everything has got to be like super dark, uh, it would limit them sort of creatively on how they could do that. But the light motivations, I felt like like from an art direction standpoint, they were able to make uh, the low light setting work really well with the different Mm -hmm. flares, the different colored, like they had the blue lights, the red flares, the green flares, like... uh, the, like even the scene where they're all in that room with the torch in the center, sort of like a campfire type scene, like it didn't stunt their creativity at all. And it still felt very dark and uh, intense and, um, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. I think the narrative strength of Pitch Black isn't so much in its originality, but its execution. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people get surprised with how well everything sort of comes together. Um, it really embraces its simplicity, using the primal fear of the dark and the unknown to ratch up the tension. Um, I guess we should probably have a have a chat about. Um, I mean, we we talked briefly about the the planet, um, which is sort of like a, it's very vast, inhospitable, and a character in its own right. And it becomes a completely different planet once the bioraptors are introduced. Um, but yeah, so going back to what I was saying, discussing each of the characters, beginning with Vin Diesel, what were your thoughts about him uh, and his Riddick character? I think I think he was like he was expressive in a way that I didn't expect. You know, I I really enjoyed his because he there was an arc he did change. You know, because he was a mystery, but it's not like it's not like that. He he was sort of a neutral character. Yeah, he would have saved them, but ne- but at, by the end, I feel like he has this want to save them. Like he, he, mm. he changed because she changed, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the, so, um, you go ahead. Yeah. I was just gonna say the presentation of his character is super interesting as well. Like we see so little of him at the beginning of the film that we have to take the unreliable, uh, characters word for what he's like. And it's mm-hmm. like kind of confirmed on what we see. And then anyways, as the film progresses, it's like, we talked about, he's, sort of relaxed throughout the entirety of the film. Like he feels very cool and in control. And um, I don't know, the characterization of that is really interesting because like uh, Andre mentioned, he's kind of gray, like he's sort of on the line. But as you mentioned early on in it, it seems like his moral compass was mostly good, right? Like when the villain is like, yeah, we should kill them and get to the ship. He's like, yeah, or we could give him a bigger chunk of bait. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anyways, he doesn't always do the right thing, but I don't ever feel like he did something horribly malicious. And so it's, I feel like yeah. difficult to write gray characters like that. You know, you could just easily Absolutely. go too far in one direction. And Absolutely. one thing, one thing that I have to say is my, in my experience with thrillers, this one is very unique in that I feel no death was wasted. Each one of Keith's characters, kids dying held weight mm. and each Further one, like they're not just rando characters. Yes, we didn't learn a lot about them, but because they were all important to his character, right? Mm -hmm. Super important. Each one, each death felt heavier heavier than the last. Even the guy that died died in a dumb way, Mm -hmm. he died because he was dumb. The script wasn't being dumb. Correct, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. He he made the decision. I'll touch on his character in a bit, but he made the decision that his character would make and. Uh, I'll explore that shortly, but just to just to tie up Riddick, you know, like Diesel gives a very magnetic performance. It's not because w- when he plays uh, in the Fast and the Furious, he's very one note. You know what I mean? He's like, yep, this is the archetypal Toretto character now that I've nailed over three, four films. We're just going to do the same thing over and over. Whereas in this, um, Riddick is very fun. He's very playful. Um, well, he, he's got this dangerous side to him where you're not sure whether he's going to tell a joke or kill you. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and I love that. Um, 
And he's not just like David Toy really knows how to write characters because he's not simply a bad guy. And it's not, and this film doesn't really it doesn't it tries to stay away from labeling people as such as being good or bad. It's just as you said with Riddick, it's morally gray. He's a man uh, with a dark past and a lot of depth to him that informs a lot of the decisions he makes. At the same time, you've got Cole, who's you know sort of like uses the badge as a cover to do some pretty heinous things. Um, and it's not until we see, and it's not until halfway through that his true nature is unveiled to us. Um, I really appreciate House's portrayal uh, of John's as both like a, how do you say, a calculated and while also very desperate man. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I just thought the dichotomy between him and Riddick was great. It's like they both start uh, polar opposites and end in polar opposites, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And and that that like desperation is real because he's he's desperate on multiple levels, right? Mm-hmm. He's sort of lost, right? He's sort of a lost type of character. He doesn't really know what his motivation is other than money. He's also sort of a junkie, so he's motivated. Like he tricked everyone so he could get all that medicine for himself, right? That's right. Like, and he's willing to go mo- morally gray for that. He's willing to go morally gray to survive. He's willing to go morally gray, not morally gray, just morally black, right? To yeah. To, uh, to so that he can get his payout and <laughs> blow it all on <laughs> more drugs, I guess, like whatever. So well, he, the difference. Go on. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah, the biggest difference between him and um, Riddick, the similarity is they're both willing to do whatever it takes to survive, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's a line that Riddick won't cross, and that's yeah. killing children, women, stuff like that. Whereas yeah. Cole does not care. Um, and that's what sets them apart. And they uh, also both don't really have lives to live for, from what mm-hmm. we gather, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And there is an illusion that maybe he wasn't always this way. Like, I felt like Riddick mentioned something, like maybe one point he was a good cop, like, you know, how far he's fallen, which I think, like, we don't see a ton of that, but obviously I think that adds a little bit more characterization to him as well, that maybe at some point he had a, a moral compass. Well, there's an interesting moment in the film where um, uh, Caroline Fry, the co-pilot, is sort of grilling him for having this uh, addiction, this drug addiction. And he plain out tells her, well, yeah, I've got a fucking piece of sheet metal in my stomach and I feel it all Mm -hmm. the time because of Riddick. And so in a way, it's sort of like he was a good person. He came across Riddick and in his uh, pursuit of of uh, bounty hunting he became a bad person so it's like one could say that riddick turned him bad and another person could say no nah, it's literally just his profession do you know what i mean whether it was riddick or somebody else he would have gone in this direction either way and what's interesting is I, we don't see cole because he's dead but in the third film uh, this w- what happened here comes back to sort of uh confront riddick the decision mm. he made here with cole comes back uh, and greets him in the third film, and I'm that's, I'm just going to leave it at that because I want to leave it as a surprise. But um, yeah. yeah, so I guess next is the co-pilot uh, Fry. You know, she's thrust mm-hmm. into a leadership role. She embodies the classic arc of redemption. You know, uh, yeah. Ryder Mitchell's performance captures a woman that's grappling with guilt from a near decision to kill everybody at the start to save herself. Um, <laughs> but over the course of the film, uh, she evolves from a you know reluctant leader to one that makes the ultimate sacrifice for for the group and for riddick she knows mm-hmm. she, she goes back to save riddick um yeah. and her interactions with riddick challenges her views on morality um her understanding of right and wrong is is challenged through riddick and through cole um and i love that Joe, right. have anything else to say about her well it, it, it's it's i find it very interesting that even even despite the fact that her decision at the beginning could have caused the most loss of life at the same time, it was a very, like, you know, managerial, like, you know, bureaucratic decision. Like, okay, we're falling. Like, if we let this go, we might make it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't, like, a, a morally black thing like like others did in the uh, did in, during the movie. Yeah. Um, so, and, but even then, she's racked by guilt by it. So, I, I just mm-hmm. find that, like, very, very good. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, well hers was an executive decision because it was, like, well... Either we all die or just they die. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't yeah. so, which I guess is very similar to to Cole, um, to, to to the change that happens in Cole, where he's willing to just abandon everybody um, 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Preston, did you have anything to say about I, Fry? I, she's, I think her character is, for me, the strongest part of the whole film. I really felt like she was the, I mean, I love Riddick, but she felt like yeah. the heartbeat of the film. And like, yeah, I, I feel like um, writers are often too terrified to make a decision to like characterize their, I guess she wasn't necessarily the main character, but you know, main character in a way that troubles them throughout the entire film you know they're like obviously every character needs growth but they'll only dip their toe into the the bad guy territory so much and with her it was like damn that's brutal like she i mean she had a second to think about it she was willing to wax the entire crew so uh obviously that's not a great decision but we can tell that she's a good person based on the level of guilt that she feels from that um and i was worried that they were all gonna fly off into the sunset sunset Mm -hmm. together which I guess would have been okay, but I felt like the way they chose to uh, end her arc was uh, really interesting and did a lot to characterize Riddick, who's a... I, I feel like he does make some pretty strong decisions throughout, like his choice to go back and save the kid is is obviously very interesting, and his decision to not, you know, betray everyone, it, it characterizes him. But I felt like her sacrificial death does a ton uh, for his character arc as well, and considering they were oh, probably yeah. gearing up for sequels and stuff, I think that makes a lot of sense to have uh, that growth lead into the subsequent films. So yeah, I loved, uh, I loved her character. She's written as a character and I feel like as though she's, if she was written uh, by a modern writer, she would just be ultimate girl boss. Do yeah. you know what I mean? She would not have been and at the start of the film. It wouldn't have been her that made the decision to almost jet and jettison everybody. That would have been her pilot. She would have been the good one. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a, there's a fear almost to to write complicated female characters. And as a result, we see these supercharged female women that are just perfect. We saw it in Secret Invasion mm-hmm. with Olivia Coleman. And towards the end, I know y'all haven't finished the series, but uh, Amelia Clark's character is basically that. She can do no wrong, even though um, she did a lot of wrong. Yeah. <laughs> she almost started the Civil War. Um, so I do appreciate the, the boldness with the... Uh, they took a lot of risks in this mm-hmm. with, with the characters. Uh, I guess that sort of leads us on to... Uh, the character Imam by Keith David. Uh, to me, he represents faith and hope amidst the chaos. His character is very pivotal in grounding the story. Um, I felt like his determination to find new Mecca and his unwavering faith in a higher power contrasts with the bleakness of their situation. And um, Keith David really brings, as I said earlier, gravitas to his role, uh, making Imam a beacon of hope uh, in a seemingly hopeless situation. Mm-hmm. And if you look at him, it would have been very easy to have his arc be a crisis of faith. But at the end, despite all the crises, his you, you never really see him like dip in faith substantially. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. like he is always fighting to maintain that faith. He's always fighting to to uh, to believe that this is part of his his journey, right? His yeah. pilgrimage, mm-hmm. even the pain, which is uh, I really like that. I really like. I, that. I, 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 there's so much setup and payoff in this. Everybody has a moment, like the discussion that Imam has with Riddick, where he's like, "Do you not believe in God?" He's like, "Yeah, I believe in God. I just think he's a prick." Um, and he's like, where, w- w- "Regardless of that or not, he's with us," you know. And then yeah. he's like, "What about all the sons that have died?" And then the payoff at the end when Riddick leaves them, and then he comes back, and he's like, "There's my God." Mm-hmm. Um, I loved it. It's just like everything is so well written. I, li- I do like the dialogue in this. Um, yeah. It's, it's not just cool lines. It's like cool lines that are thematically relevant, mm-hmm. that, that feed into the character, feed into the uh, the themes, the motifs, the stakes. Uh, nothing is wasted. I know it's a very long film. Which, you know, could have probably been cut down to an hour and a half. But at an, an hour and 51, I felt like everything we see is quite critical. Mm-hmm. And, and the pacing is very deliberate. You know, the first half and- is very slow. But once we get towards the end, it does not hold back. Yeah. And the length is perfect perfect because it's a film that knows how to take it, take its time without wasting your time, you know? Mm-hmm. When when it's being slow, you can tell the film itself is being patient. It's not it's not just stagnant, yeah. right? So I feel I feel like the the length is perfect. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. Especially for a script that delves into morality, redemption and survival, you know what I mean? It's like if this was just a survival film, then sure, it could be an hour and a half, but there's so much more to it than that, you know. Decisions aren't black and white. They're very pitch black. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Characters are constantly confronted with moral uh, quandaries leading to unexpected alliances and betrayals. And the narrative, like, really subtly questions who the real monsters are, you know, as mm-hmm. if the creatures outside or the humans within. Um, 
any other character? Jack. I think let's let's have a brief chat about Jack and also Paris. So Jack is the girl who's pretending to be a boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, her character feel- in her. Oh, go ahead. What were, what were you gonna say, Andre? No, no, I I I really feel like she also affected Riddick in a way. She was oh yeah. She, she was clinging to what she thought was the strongest figure there, the fearless one, right? So that she could emulate that and actually survive and not be bullied, like she said, right? So that mm-hmm. they wouldn't pick on her, right? Yeah. And so I think I think that fact that she decided to emulate Riddick affected him in a way. Mm-hmm. You know? And notice she she chose to emulate Riddick and not Cole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I think I think the the part of the reason why Riddick goes back is that he knows Cole isn't a good person anymore, right? And he knows that Cole is probably going to betray this group, and um, and I get the feeling that when he sees Jack idolizing him, it's him. It's reinforcing the notion that not only is she idolizing him because she knows he's the most dangerous person there, and obviously he's the one most likely to survive, but it's sort of in his mind it reinforces the notion that well she she picked me over Cole. And mm-hmm. I know that Cole is a bad person and she's idolizing me. I can't betray her. Do you know what I mean? I think that's sort of like his. And, uh, and when he find when he comes back, he said, I never doubted for a second or something like that. Right. Well, so, she says yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I do like that. She's initially presented as a boy, you know, Jack's character and her admiration for Riddick, you know, adds a very youthful perspective mm-hmm. to the crazy harsh reality that they're in. Um, mm-hmm. She's so optimistic. Even when the, like shit's going down, she's very optimistic, jovial, um, transitioning from an innocent to a survivor, um, right. and it's all very effectively and, and subtly portrayed. Very realistic, right? Because like you could say, like the fact that she's she's bleeding, like we know what that means, right? Like yep. the fact that she's bleeding would be caused because she know she she. I think she sort of can tell. She's a good judge of character. She could tell that the cop guy would have left her behind, right? Like and so and so, or that people that think she's a liability would have left her behind. So she needed to keep that hidden. She and the the best way of doing that is making sure that everyone thinks uh they're a boy. And th- and again, just going back to every fucking character is quite unique and quite intelligent. Even Jack as a child, the decision she makes to pretend to be a boy is a very clever strategic decision to make. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cuz it's like she doesn't want it, she doesn't want the group to see her as a liability. Um, and she's like, yep, I'm a boy. And then she goes one step further by cutting her hair, looking like Riddick. It's just like, it's, it's the kind of thing that a survivor would do. And, you know, and I think Riddick recognizes her survivor instinct and he fucking admires the co-pilot survival instinct at the end when he's testing her, he's like, it's almost like he's flirting with her. And he's like, Mm -hmm. if she says that she was going to leave with him. It almost like the romance would have died but the fact that she's like yeah i'm willing to die for them he's like oh, i'm so turned on right now <laughs> yeah. let's go let's go kill some aliens um <laughs> uh and i guess i mean there's there's obviously a lot of other characters in there but um just to sort of wrap things up paris was a really really cool um addition to this the self-preserving antiquities dealer to me not only did he uh, provide like a touch of comic relief, but he also stand or stood out as a symbol of civilized man's ill preparation for the rawness of nature. Do you know what I mean? While everybody's coming up with clever ways to survive, you know, coming up with plans, his reliance on vices, wine, and all of that sort of highlights his denial and his unpreparedness and his unwillingness to survive. Showed highlighted by the fact that he leaves the group, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, he's so afraid. And I think that the actor, Lewis Fitzgerald, his portrayal aptly captures a man out of his depth, clinging to the last remnants of the world that he knows. Um, he, he would rather get drunk and die than fight for survival, which is why he dies. Right. And even he had a really cool death. I think the, the, the darkness plus the lighting choices in the, like the, the choices for like the monsters aesthetic in the darkness mm-hmm. made all the fight. Like when he's like, I should have died. I was going to die in Paris. I was never been to Paris. And then he, breathes the fucking fire and you can see all the monsters around him and you know he's dead <laughs> you know that's yeah. it yeah and we don't see his death and also another thing i'd like to i mean i keep praising this film for setup and payoff but him blowing into you know drinking mm. the, the whiskey and then blowing out the fire that was set up previously because mm-hmm. we see him do that and we're like wait why is he doing that and i think for him it's like uh like a last minute thing you know yeah. if i'm surrounded in stuff um, I have like a weapon and I'll be able to breathe fire. And mm-hmm. ironically, he, he ends up using it when he's about to die because he's like, they, he can hear the monsters around him. It's pitch black. He's fucking scared. And he's like, well, I want to see what it is that's going to kill me. And when he does, mm-hmm. it's almost like 
he regrets that he is able to see what, yeah. what's about to happen to him. Um, and on the the topic of setup and payoff, the fact like again we talked about it at the beginning, but there's so much booze involved. It was like, why does this film care so much about the booze? It's a light source. The twist, yes. there's no light. You know what I mean? Oh, this is yep. now really relevant. You know what I mean? Um, and I I really appreciated that as well. Like nothing uh, is wasted. There's no I don't I feel like there's very few one off details that don't end up coming back around, which is great. Like. It's like you're saying, well, pace doesn't waste your time. Like if it's spending a lot of time on some detail that seems insignificant, just, you know, stick in there, hang around because it's going to come back. Absolutely. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, the only other thing I'd really say is just it's it's a great film. I think it's execution. It's very simple in terms of the story it's trying to tell, but it ticks every box. It ticks the sci-fi. It ticks the, the horror aspect. It ticks the character uh, it, it, there's there's no plot contrivances. Do you know what I mean? Everything works because it's all been set up. Nothing happens out of out of random. Everything is very deliberate. All of the characters go through a journey, whether they go through an arc or not. They all go through a journey. They learn something about themselves. They learn something significant about all the other people around them. Um, uh, it's just amazing. Um, it's a sleeper hit film for me. Mm -hmm. I remember loving it as a kid, but not really understanding why. And it's not until you sort of watch it through an adult lens that you realize, holy shit, this is, when you compare this script to the kind of films that we're seeing now, so tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Well, with that said, dudes, thank you so much for joining me for this uh, breakdown and commentary. Uh, it's been heaps of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, like I said, I have not seen this movie in so long. I'd almost forgotten all of it, and it did not disappoint. And it makes me a little sad about the sequel, but... Maybe that's another podcast. For sure. Yeah, they definitely go in a very different direction with the second film. Uh, it, it goes from like a very self-contained, uh, private uh, sci-fi horror on a secluded planet to, as I said, a very Star Wars-like space opera. Mm -hmm. where a lot, of, a lot of things have changed. I'll just put it at that. I know you haven't seen it, Andre, so I want to leave it as a surprise because you're going to be like, what the fuck is going on? What I'm, movie, like what movie series are we in? Cause it really I'm throws, excited. You, it Hell throws yeah. you out. But, um, Ooh. but with that said, guys, thanks for joining me and to the people in the audience. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this and, uh, we'll catch you hopefully next week or the week after word. All right. All right. Peace. Y'all take it easy. Catch you out.